amongst the trees appeared with the green to kill them and to drag off their bodies. A chill in the air, the scent of death crawling, full moon the witness as one by one they trespassed his ground and chose to take chances dragged into the black furrows in the ground dragged into the night their bodies never found on the night of the fifth, when nothing could save them, there was no protection from the darkness and the doom. The wind held his mind, and a man turned to murder. Black gusts in the night, damp with their blood. Breath in the night, dripping their blood, dripping their blood, dripping their blood. <laughs> <laughs> blood. <laughs> now it's time for my story. My story deals with a man who used to live in that old dilapidated house behind those trees. We're not supposed to be this close to it because uh, many strange things happen around here. He was a farmer with his family, wife and two children. He was an evil man. Ugly and mean. He'd beat his wife brutally punish his children. He'd drink at the tavern and <laughs> fight all the time. He once had a piece of his nose bitten off in a brawl and didn't feel a thing. It was a night like tonight, many, many years ago. Wait a minute. Now that I think about it, it was the same night as tonight. The woods, quiet and dark, the farmer for no apparent reason, went stark, raving mad. He walked into his bedroom with an axe in his hand and chopped his sleeping wife into little pieces. Then, with his bloodlust awakened, he walked down the hall to his son's room and took an axe to him, and he still wasn't finished. He walked across the hall to his daughter's room, and without so much as a word, he chopped her into little pieces too. Then he calmly walked into the tavern, lifted the bloody axe onto the bar, and ordered himself a beer. Well, it wasn't long before the town found out what happened, and when it did, it was all over for the mad farmer, or so they thought. Ten men jumped him and dragged him screaming to the nearest tree, where they quickly looped a thick rope around his neck and hoisted him high into the air. One of them grabbed the bloody axe and swung it at the farmer's head, leaving a deep, bloody gash on the side of his face. They left him there, hanging for dead. Next morning, when they went to cut him down, he was gone. It was then they noticed the bodies of his wife and children were missing, and their bodies have never been found. Oh, Max, come on. How could their bodies never be found? I mean, where could they be? I don't know, Richie. All I do know is that on certain nights, when the moon is full, he's out there stalking in the woods, searching for people so he can chop their heads off with an ax or hang them from a tree. You're trying to be funny or something. What's this farmer's name anyway? <laughs> Richie. I have a good reason I haven't told you his name. A very good reason. You see, it is said also that if you say his name above a whisper in the woods, he will hear you because he can be anywhere, anytime. 
And if he hears you call his name, he'll come for you. And if he comes for you, he'll get you. One by one, you'll start to fall before night's over. I'll get you all. His name is Madman Ma. What do you say? I couldn't hear him. His name is Mars. Madman Ma. Hey, Mars! Madman Mars! Here we are! Come and get us, Madman! Madman Mars! Oh, Richie, now you've done it. Don't you realize you're fooling with things beyond your control? The Madman Mars doesn't understand anymore. The Madman Mars thinks you're making fun of him. He didn't mean it, Mars! He's young and foolish. He doesn't know what he's doing. Stay where you are. We mean you no harm. Let's hope that stopped him in time. If not, no one is safe in the woods tonight. Anyone alone in the woods you can't hear him. You can't see him. You smell this odor of death. And you turn around, and suddenly, this horribly mutilated face stares down at you. It's the last thing you see before zap! Off goes your head. I hope you enjoyed my little story. It's my way of saying goodbye and good luck to your children. Tomorrow, your parents will be up to spend the last weekend before Thanksgiving, and my winter vacation down south. I enjoyed your company. Okay, when we break, TP and the boys will have the responsibility of killing the fire. Everybody else will get ready for the walk back. And remember, don't walk in the woods alone, cause... The Mad Men Mars will get you! That's right. <laughs> Betsy, what's a madman, Mars? It's nothing, honey. It's just a figment of Max's imagination. Something he made up to scare you, that's all. Oh, he sure did that all right. I was so scared, I couldn't open my eyes. And it's all right. Nobody's going to come and get me and chop off my head. <laughs> don't worry, honey. Nobody's going to hurt you. I'll make sure of that, OK? Now, you join the other girls and don't worry about a thing, huh? Tonight, same time. Well, if it isn't the big, brave man who scares little girls to tears. Proud of yourself? What's the matter? You scared half those kids to death. That's what's the matter. Come on, Betsy. It's all in fun. They enjoyed it. Now, what about tonight? Same time. No, T.P., I, I don't think so. Not tonight. We don't have many nights left. Yes, we do. We have the rest of our lives. Come on, Betsy. You know you're not going to want to see me once we get back to the city. I'm sorry, T.P. Let's just say I hate saying goodbye. Hey, you two. You're making this public knowledge. Save it for later. You never give up, do you? What's that supposed to mean? Give her room to make up her own mind. If you really love her, the biggest test is letting go, not holding on. <laughs> Come on, you guys, let's go. We don't have all night. Jimmy, grab some dirt over there and get that in. Tommy, kick the stones a little closer. Now, Richie, come on, Richie, come on, move it, move it, Richie. I'm moving, I'm moving. What'd you say? No, I didn't say anything. I was talking to the fire. He didn't say nothing. I heard him. Yeah, he lies and you swear to it. You stop. <laughs> Okay, that looks good. Let's line up. All right. Get ready for a little double time. I want to catch them before they reach the bungalows. Double time in place. Go! 
one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Move out. Let's go. All right, you guys, you're released. Finish packing, cleanups in a half hour. Who is it? It's me, Stacy. Come on in. What's up? Nothing. You feeling okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I always get quiet when it's over for the season. He never lets go, does he? No, he doesn't. He wants it to go on and on and on. Are you going to see him in town? I don't know, maybe. I need some breathing room. Well, I'm happy to hear that you recognize the signs of a possessive male. They should have a big red warning light screwed into their foreheads, flashing, beware, beware. <laughs> <laughs> that would make it easier, wouldn't it? You could see them a mile away. Beep boop, beep boop, beep boop. And yet there are things that I like about him. When we're alone, he's soft and tender. I don't know, it's so confusing. Tell me about it. They chase you till you're half dead, get you, then try to get rid of you. Personally, I don't care which way they want it, only make up your mind. Mm -hmm. You've had an interesting life, Stacy. Boring, Betsy. I'm looking forward to finding me one man, and I'm gonna stay put. Anybody special in mind? A couple? I didn't say I wanted to stay put that fast. But my past is no secret to you. <laughs> listen, Stacy, I want to thank you for having an ear to listen and a shoulder to cry on. There were times I needed it. OK, enough hearts and flowers. I'm glad you're feeling better. I just wanted to check and make sure. Thanks, I feel better. You know, Betsy, mm -hmm. I don't have many women friends. and. Uh, I think you're one of them. Well, I am. <laughs> hey, give me your number in the city. Huh? Yeah, tomorrow. Better hurry. We got clean up in a couple of minutes. Oh, See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, Max. 
Is your offer of a hundred bucks to anyone who could pull a sax out here still good? Yeah, it's still good. <laughs> Come on, Max, give me a hand. Let's get the sax out of here. Dippy, give us a hand! Oh, oh let it go, TP. Oh, we lost. There'll be another time. Maybe, but I don't like losing. Losing, winning, what's the difference? Play the game with a fair heart and you'll always be able to look yourself in the mirror. Play too hard to win, and you might not like what you become. You become a winner. That's what you become. Dippy, it's empty. see Richie anywhere. He must have stayed back at the campfire. What are we gonna do? We make up his bed like he's sleeping. We've got to give him more time to get back. Richie knows what he's doing. I'll uh, make this short and sweet. Oh, good. <laughs> Thanks. Now I'll never stop. I think you all contributed something to the growth of the people as, as individuals and the kids in general that will stay with them the rest of their lives. Yeah, they'll never go out in the woods alone, ever again. <laughs> Max, I'd like to say something about the campfire. Sure, Betsy. 
I know how you enjoy telling stories around a fire, and I don't want to ruin it. But I'm concerned with the effect it has on the younger ones. They're in tears by the time it's over. I don't think it's good for them. Well, that's a good point. I never thought of that. I don't have any objections to excluding the younger kids from the campfire. Well, next year, I'll scare the hell out of only the older ones. OK, <laughs> Betsy. <laughs> I like to keep my staff happy, within reason, of course. All right, I'm going into town to pick up the shutters from Sunny's and play some cards. Anybody need anything? Yeah, but you ain't gonna find it at sunny. <laughs> Down, girl. You'll be back in the big city in a day or two. You can get anything you want there. Hold it. <laughs> I'm getting a bit too old for this kind of talk. I'm leaving. Bye. Oh, Bye. before I forget, that beer you've got hidden in the bottom of the refrigerator against orders, save me one. I'll be back in a couple of hours. Keep a sharp eye on the kids. DP, you're in charge. I'd like to get into something a bit more personal. Tonight, you all witnessed a scene between Betsy and me up at the campfire that should have never happened. I'd like to publicly apologize to Betsy and to the rest of you for subjecting you to my petty and selfish attitude. That's it, folks. I propose a toast. To friends and friendship, to love and lovers. May you always have more than you need. If you're gonna ask, why is this, why is that? It's up to you. And if you want to know just why the flowers grow, that's OK, too. But if you're going to ask me why, I love you like I do. I don't think I can explain. Got no words to say it. Really rather play it out with you. Only know the feelings, chemistry revealing this simple truth. Should you feel it too? Please let your feelings through. Love, get a grip on us too. Don't need words to know. Don't need words to know how I feel about you. Don't need words. Magician does his magic. Thrills you with a slick trick You never know Just how he makes it happen Find yourself just clapping And feeling good Should the magic get you high No need to wonder why Come with me together, let's count all the stars in the sky. Don't need words to know how I feel about you. Don't need words. Don't need
I was right in the middle. You didn't let me finish. <laughs> <laughs> you never <laughs> 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 Great fire, Bill. Thanks. I love to feel the flames devour the wood. Who says there's no beauty in destruction? I don't think there's beauty in any kind of destruction. For any reason. I'd say that depends on the reason. For as long as our reason stays reasonable. That's the most frightening thing about us humans. really know what's in my mind at any given time. You never know if I'm thinking rationally or if I've created some other reality that seems to fit, that seems to be normal. But you never really know what normal is to me. You never really know. Dave, are you okay? Of course, Ellen. I'm letting my emotions overcome my intellect. See what happens. See how easy it is to question another human mind. I can judge by your faces there's a question about me. A touch of fear in your eyes. Who is this man? Where does he come from? I could take your bodies one at a time and hide them so no one would ever find them. I could chop off 
your Jimmy, can you tell me anything about where Richie the Wise Guy is? Okay, get back to sleep. Nobody leaves this cabin. That's an order. find them. Well, why don't you get Bill and Dave to help? I lost them. It's my responsibility to find them. So dark out there. More people looking, the better. Don't worry. I'm just gonna take a quick look. If I don't find them, I'll be back in a while to get the others. You wait in the office and stay awake. Yes, sir. TP. Be careful. TP? Nothing, it's okay. Be careful. about what you said this afternoon. Did it shock you that much? No. I only want you to be sure of leaving school and me. I told you. I love you. I want to be with you. Any more doubts? No. No more doubts. Great moon tonight. Eh, Billy Boy? Yeah, great moon tonight. Yeah. Let's go for a swim. I have a better idea. Richie! 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 Richie? That you, Richie? Come on, Richie. Come on out. I know you're in there, Richie. Come on out, Richie.
Smells like that. He loves me not. He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. As if I didn't know. Oh, TP, where are you? Nanny said he'd be back in 10 minutes and left. It's been close to 45, and that's not like TP. You know that, Dave. Yeah, I know. This happens at least twice a year. Last year it took us about three hours to track down a kid who made a left instead of a right and wound up in the North Fork. That was in broad daylight. <laughs> Betsy, I'm surprised at you. I didn't know you were such a warrior. Why this strange look in your eyes? Well, you two are gonna laugh, but as TP was leaving, I saw something by the side of the house. I... It was big. I couldn't make any features because of the shadows. Okay, Betsy, I get your point. I'll go looking for him. No need to make up any more stories for the dramatic effect. I'm not making up any stories. What happened to this shadow? Well, the next time I looked up, it was gone. Okay, I'm leaving. Look, see how fast I'm moving? Dave, don't make fun of me, please. Okay, I'm sorry. Don't worry so much. I'll find him one, two, three. Keep her company till we get back, okay? I saw something out there. I did. At least I think I did. P, you out there? TP! Richie! T. 
TP! Richie! Betsy, wait here. I'm going to go find Bill and Ellie and then take a ride to the end of the trail. I think we should both stay here. Well, Betsy, that's the difference between you and me. You're content to sit behind and I'm not. I'd like to know what's going on. I'll see you in a little while. Stacy, don't you ever knock? 
Sorry. Uh, I, I don't usually bust in like this, but we need you both up in the office. What's the matter? I don't know. Richie's been missing since the campfire, and T.P. went to find him, and then Dave went to find them, and nobody's returned yet. So I figured it would be better if we're all available for duty, uh, so to speak. How long have they been gone? I don't know for sure. Too long, as far as I'm concerned. I, I gotta get back. Sorry again, you two. Uh, don't rush, but hurry, if you know what I mean. We're coming. Be right there. I don't like it. I wish Max would get back. He always knows what to do in an emergency. Easy, Ellie. This isn't exactly an emergency. Max would do what we're doing. We got a search for a lost kid. Only TP should have called the whole group together instead of going off on his own. The more people you have searching, the better it is. What are you going to do? I'm going to catch up with Stacy. What about you? Well, if it's better to have more people looking, then I'll go with you. You OK here alone? Alone? <laughs> I've got five kids to look after. Who's alone? Only get back as soon as you can. Hmm? I don't want Max to find everybody gone. He's funny that way. We'll gather the group and come right back. Good. That's what I want to hear. T.P.? Dave? Richie?
Are you hurt? I see it. She's in the woods already. Look, the campfire area is that way. If you move close to the trail and I go this way, we'll make a complete circle. Be careful. You too. Are you ready? As ready as I'll ever be.
is it, baby? What's wrong? <laughs> oh, Bill, I saw something horrible. It was big and huge and dark. I, I don't see know. see for myself. Do you want to wait here or come with me? <laughs> Why can't we go back to the office? What good is that? Let's find out for sure what you saw, if anything at all, okay? Okay. But don't let go of my hand. <laughs> I don't see anything, Ellie. Nothing. Yeah. Let's go back now. Okay. Let's go. Nothing. Stay in the truck.
Max, get me Max. Max, it's Betsy. You gotta come back. There's blood all over the place. Uh, hold on, Betsy. What are you talking about? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. It's just blood all over the fireplace. You gotta come back now. I'll be right there. Okay, let's go. There's no time to change. Come on, get your coats on. Let's go. Boys, leave everything and get to the bus right now. Come on, let's go. Come on.
I've got to find the others. Gotta see if anybody's alive. Drive directly to the police station. Don't stop for anything. Oh, Betsy, don't leave us. I'm sorry, honey. I love you.
Richie! Richie! Are you all right? Richie! M man Mars. He's real.